Today, we look at the best And, <sighs> and, <sighs> that the city has to offer here on Big Easy Life. There are so many amazing movies and TV shows that have been filmed here in the Wallens that it, it's hard to narrow down, but. So many. But I guess that's our job, so well, yeah. we'll work on it. For this episode, we're not only going to look at some of what we think are our favorite movies, but we had a better idea. We're going to take our top 12 picks and put them together to tour you around the city and see all the amazing yeah, places experience. around the city using our 12 movies. So I know we're going to miss a whole bunch that you like, and there was a lot that I wanted to add that I didn't. So please... Share your favorite New Orleans movie moments in the comments below. And maybe we'll do a part two where we can do some More other great movies. places. That's right. Off we go. Let's start in 1958 with King Creole. This follows a 19-year-old Elvis Presley who gets mixed up with crooks and involved with two women. Presley was granted a 60-day deferment from beginning his time in the military. The movie represents many clubs and bars in the French Quarter, which will surely add to your stops during a visit. The highlights to take from this movie are the Cornstalk Hotel, not only that it's in many shots as Elvis is on their balcony, he actually stayed there during the filming. This place was originally built in 1816 as the home of the first Attorney General of Louisiana, Francis Xavier Martin. The Cornstalk Hotel attracted travelers who were intrigued by its history and its old world appeal. In 1834, the home was purchased by Dr. Joseph Biamonte for himself and his wife. A little over 20 years later, Dr. Biamonte's wife fell homesick for her state of Iowa and its waving fields of corn. In hopes to ease her heartache, he had a decorative iron fence depicted with corn stalks created and erected at the front of his home. So, what are you going to add to your list? Well, music clubs along the French Quarter and the Cornstalk Hotel. Sounds like a good start. Next up is Easy Rider from 1969. This landmark counterculture film of drugs, motorcycles, and freedom traveling all over the South and Southwest, but it was a Mardi Gras stop here in New Orleans and a very amorous visit to St. Louis number one that gets it on our list. For having such a limited time in the Big Easy, its impact is huge. First, Mardi Gras. We've done countless episodes on this, so please take a look at some of those. The other highlights, Pun intended, is our unique cemeteries. A visit St. Louis number no. one, which is our oldest continuously operated cemetery, having opened in 1789. Its walled and crypted borders and above ground tombs and vaults make a morose and beautiful setting in our city that shouldn't be missed. Note, there are many more cemeteries worthy of visit, so please check out one of the others we highlight in our cemetery series. And please, no sex in the cemetery. So what are you going to do? Well, try to get down here for Mardi Gras sometimes. I always say there's New Orleans and then there's Mardi Gras New Orleans. Two totally different cities. Take a cemetery tour, especially St. Louis number one, but numerous ones that I think are well worth the visit. The year is 1973. The movie is Live and Let Die. It is the eighth James Bond film and the first featuring Roger Moore. It opens with a scene in the French Quarter of the Olympia Brass Band doing a funeral march along a stretch of Charter Street. The French Quarter obviously gets a starring role as the villain has a restaurant, Filet of Soul, in the quarter. The local connection that I enjoy the most is south of the city in Phoenix, Louisiana. This is where the world record boat jump takes place over the Phoenix Bridge. 
So if you're paying attention on our tour, we're back in the French Quarter, but you should take this opportunity to pick an amazing restaurant. Filet of Soul is not on that list. Also, get out of the city for a bit. Since we're talking boats and alligators, you should go on a wonderful swamp tour. Next on our list is Pretty Baby from 1978. The plot focuses on a 12-year-old prostitute in the Red Light District of New Orleans, soon after the beginning of the 20th century. This film was mostly praised by critics. It did get significant controversy, obviously due to the depiction of child prostitution. The majority of the interior and some exterior shots were filmed at New Orleans' landmark, the Columns Hotel on St. Charles Avenue. Now, the Columns is no ordinary hotel. It was built in 1883 as a private residence. It was converted into a boarding house during World War I. In 1953, a local family turned it into a hotel, and the bar on the porch became a star. It was listed on the National Park Service's National Register of Historic Places in 2019. With a view of the Oak Line streetcar tracks on St. Charles Avenue, it definitely gets a spot on our tour. So, what are we doing? Cocktails at the Columns. Maybe even a ride on the streetcar and a stroll on St. Charles Avenue. That's not bad for one movie. Okay, our next movie is not without its detractors, and uh, <clears throat> no doubt I'm one of them. But it's a totally New Orleans-centric film. I mean, it's in the title. I speak of The Big Easy from 1986. It's listed as an American neo-noir romantic thriller. I'll just say, as a born and bred local, it's hard to watch. The people, specifically their accents, are not us. But that aside, it shows some amazing locations in the Crescent City. It is a murder mystery as well, and our body is found in the Piazza d'Italia, it's a monument to the Italian-American community and their contribution to the city of New Orleans. It's located adjacent to the American Italian Renaissance Foundation Museum and Library. Both amazing places to visit. We did a complete episode on it, so make sure you take a look at that. Another prime location from the movie is a visit to Tipitina's. Now, there's a problem. In the movie, they say it's a restaurant. It's not. It's a world-famous music hall that has seen artists of every genre shake the walls. Check their listings on their website for who's playing and go there. So, what are we going to do? Visit the Piazza d'Italia. It's an amazing place just to take a look at. You could always go to the American Italian Renaissance Foundation Museum and get up to Tipitina's and catch a local act. In 1987, a neo-noir psychological horror film called Angel Heart came out. It had Robert De Niro as Louis Cipher and Mickey Rourke as Harry Angel. It's dark, gritty, and very at home in its 1950s view of New Orleans. As they tramp around the city, a few things to make note of is the use of St. Charles Streetcar Line that's been in operation since 1835, they spend time along Magazine Street, which has become a hub for over 200 boutique shops and 80 bistro-type eateries. Finally, Harry Angel travels through the French market that's been in operation as a trading post for longer than the existence of the city. I guess the beauty of this is that although we are long past the 1950s, many of these locations have changed little since then and hold a piece of history and culture with them today. So, what are we going to do? Again, take a ride on the streetcar. Can't beat it at a dollar and a quarter. Visit Magazine Street with all its boutique shops and restaurants. You can't go wrong there. And stroll through the French market. You could start with Café du Mans and end in the flea market for all those wonderful gifts you want to bring back home to the people who didn't come with you. In 1991, Oliver Stone released JFK. This was his tale of the supposed cover-up of the assassination and the case brought by New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison. 
They spend some time here in New Orleans, mostly courthouse, but that isn't at all interesting. So I thought we would focus on two scenes as the movers and shakers meet at amazing restaurants. The first location is the Napoleon House at 500 Charters. The building's first occupant, Nicholas Gerard, was mayor of New Orleans from 1812 to 1815. He offered his residence to Napoleon in 1821 as a refuge during his exile. That alone is a reason to visit, but the amazing menu, in my opinion one of the best muffaladas in the city, as well as a world-class Pimm's Cup cocktail, will bring you back time and time again. The other restaurant featured is Antoine's. This is the granddaddy of New Orleans restaurants. It is the oldest family-operated establishment, being open since 1840, and it is a classic French restaurant with a capital F. I mean, they invented Oysters Rockefeller. So, what are you going to do? Well, catch lunch at the Napoleon House, get a muffalata and a Pimm's Cup, and get you some reservations to eat at Antoine's later on. Our next movie is Interview with a Vampire from 1994. This was based on the book by local author and legend Anne Rice. It's deeply rooted in the city and has many locations we could discuss. I even worked on the set of this movie as a paramedic. Today we'll focus on two locations. First is Louis's estate in the movie, which was all filmed at Oak Alley Plantation, a sprawling sugarcane plantation built in the 1830s. It is known today for the amazing historic tours, their alley of oaks, and an award-winning formal garden. It's considered a National Historic Landmark. Our other location is Madame John's Legacy. It is seen in the funeral scene of the movie after Claudia eats her piano teacher. This is one of the oldest remaining buildings in the city, having been completed in 1788. The building's name derives from a story by New Orleans author George Washington Cable and refers to a building that previously stood on this site. It's currently closed for re renovations but it is a museum owned by the state museum system, so it's well worth a look at the outside and, depending on when you see this, taking a tour. Our next film is Deja Vu from 2006. This is a wild movie that runs all over New Orleans, sometimes magically from place to place. The best thing it does is make the Big Easy a character all of its own. We want to highlight two scenes that lead us to two great locations to visit. The first is the scene of Claire's, Halle Berry's, funeral. Oops, spoiler alert, sorry about that. Sorta, of, not really. Her services are held in the magnificent Lafayette Cemetery, which was laid out in 1832 and is named for the city of Lafayette, which it used to be part of until it was annexed by the city of New Orleans. It sits in the heart of the Garden District across the street from Commander's Palace. Our second scene is the bombing of the Canal Street Ferry. No, I am not sending you to a bombing. I am sending you on a ferry ride to the Algiers Ferry Terminal, directly across the river from Canal Street. This landing is the gateway to old Algiers, and in my opinion, has the best photo opportunities of the city skyline to be had. It's $2 each way and is pedestrian only. Where else can you cruise the Mississippi for two bucks? So, what are we going to do? Take a tour of Lafayette Cemetery and the Garden District. And take a ride on the ferry and take you some pictures of a beautiful skyline. Okay, let's talk about the HBO series Treme. It premiered in 2010 and ran for four seasons. I cannot even begin to list all the locations that they show us. From clubs to restaurants to areas that are the soul of the city. I think we may need to do an entire show just on Treme. But for this episode, we're going to talk about Desotel's first restaurant, which she actually goes back to under its real name, and that would be Patio's Restaurant at 6078 Laurel Street, an amazing local eatery that shouldn't be missed. Our second stop is less precise, it's Frenchman Street, 
specifically the first three blocks from the river. This is the location of stacks of music clubs that were featured in the series, including the Blue Nile, the Spotted Cat, DBA, Snug Harbor, and many more clubs and other businesses. It started out as an underground music area for locals and has grown into a world-class music district all on its own. So, what are you going to do? Go to Patio's Restaurant, sit in what was Des Hotel's restaurant for the whole first season, and then stroll down Frenchman Street and soak in that amazing New Orleans atmosphere. You'll actually hear some of the bands that played in Treme at these locations. All right, we're going to continue with another series that premiered in 2013, and that's American Horror Story Season 3, Coven. The season's focused on a school for girls, witches, witch girls, something like that. It brings in the several historical figures from New Orleans' darker past into the show, including Marie Laveau, the Axeman, and Madame Delphine Lalaurie. In an odd twist, her real-life antics exceed what you see on the TV show. Her former residence is widely considered the most haunted house in the city and is on every ghost tour's agenda. It sits at the corner of Governor Nichols and Royal Street in the French Quarter. Another location would be Mrs. Robichaud's Academy. It sits in the Garden District and is known to locals as the Buckner Mansion. It was built in 1856 by a cotton magnet and has served not only as a resident, but as a prominent business school. If you're a major fan of Coven, you can actually rent this location. That is, if you have $20,000 a night. So, what are you going to do? Book a ghost tour. You'll get to see the Lalaurie Mansion and hear the whole story. Again, take a tour in the Garden District and you can see the Buckner Mansion and... If your pockets are really deep, stay there the night. All right, we will wrap up our list with the 2014 series, NCIS New Orleans. This series has been good for the Big Easy in many ways by highlighting the region. We're going to look at two locations. First is in the 700 block of St. Anne. I include this because it's the entrance to the NCIS headquarters. In reality, the HQ is a soundstage in Hollywood. The St. Anne location is a private parking lot, but hey, it makes great photo ops if you're a fan. The second stop is Dwayne Pride's own bar, the True Tone Bar. You've seen many moments in this locale, and I can tell you not only is it a real place, it's a really cool place. It's actually the R Bar in the Royal Street Inn at 1431 Royal. It sits right in the Faubourg Marigny and is a welcome stop for locals and tourists alike. If you want to do something super cool, book a stay in the inn. It's rumored to have once hosted the Rolling Stones. Man, that was a lot of stops and we barely scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. Let us know below what you thought, what was your favorite that we covered, and name any others that you uh, didn't see that we mentioned. I'm sure there was a whole bunch. There's a lot. I didn't even add animated movies on this one. Whoa. Please give us a like and subscribe. Visit our website at www.bigeasylife.org. And as always, thanks for being part of our Big Easy Life.